Recently, Jordan Standridge of uh, the Cripplegate wrote three reasons that God is a cessationist, meaning when he finished inspiring a Revelation 22, he put an exclamation point on it and said, don't let anybody add to this revelation. This is it. It's all done. Everything that you need for life and godliness is in this book. And yet there are some evangelicals today who would claim, thus saith the Lord, God told me to tell you, which means that that person is speaking, presumably under the inspiration of the Spirit, declaring the authoritative word of God. And God himself has already said, no, 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 no. We've already got it. It's found in 66 books. It is sufficient. You don't need anything else. The folks who would like to say that God told them to tell you something typically also believe in other signs and wonders. In other words, they're continuationists. They believe that God is still speaking outside of the word and God is still doing kaboom, signs and wonders, miracles. The two are connected. Miracles. The, the big stuff, the, the parting of a sea, the rising somebody, raising somebody from the dead, they all had the same intention, and they served the same role to give credence to the message of the messenger before the Bible was enshrined in 66 books. Signs and wonders were for the authentication of the message of the messenger. But now that we have the message from God in the Bible, which has power all by itself, it doesn't need big kaboom miracles. It is a two-edged sword that cuts when we simply speak it, preach it to people. That is where the power is found. We don't need the power of miracles. Jordan Standridge did a tour of biblical history to take a look at miracles because miracles and hearing from God are so tied together, we would do well to understand, is God still doing those miracles and is God still speaking? Let's take that tour through history, shall we? The first person that comes to mind is Jesus, of course, and the disciples did tons of miracles. The other would be Elijah, and of course, Elijah after him. And finally, we've got miracle worker Moses, as well as Joshua with a miracle or two of his own. Now, can you think of anyone else? Anyone between Adam and Moses, anyone between Moses and Elijah, even one person between Elijah and Jesus. 6,000 years at least of world history and only 200 years where people could do miracles. This is instructive. These days we hear a lot of people telling others that God has told them to tell them something. Everybody apparently should have this gift, which would be a bit odd considering the history of miracles. Very, very rare. Typically, man is inside the can't do miracles box and only gets let out for about 60, 70 years at a time to be put back into the box for centuries. So let's say that between Adam and Moses, there are 2,500 years of history. In this time, there was no human being who could do miracles. Then for about 60 years, God allowed Moses and Joshua to be able to do a dozen or so miracles. Then between Joshua and Elijah, there are about 500 years. And again, for about 60 years, God allowed Elijah and Elijah to be outside of the box and perform about a dozen miracles. For about 4,000 years of Old Testament history, only four men were able to do miracles for a total of 120 to 140 years and only a couple dozen miracles at that. Isn't it odd that today we hear so many reports, they are unsubstantiated, but so many reports of miracles when God did not allow the holy men of old to do the same. Uh, let's keep cripple gating. 900 years after Elijah, God himself came to earth, did an incredible number of miracles, then allowed his disciples to do many miracles for 60 to 70 years until John died. And for 2,000 years of church history, God only allowed a few miracle workers for a minor fraction of that time. And consistent with Bible history, the Lord put man back into the box where he belongs and took over the duties of lone miracle worker. What does this have to do with sola scriptura? Very glad you asked. 
for more than 1,800 years of church history. That's, that's after Jesus rose from the dead. God had stopped giving men sign gifts until supposedly he let man out of his box again. What did this produce? speaking in unintelligible languages. It produced unconfirmed and unprovable healings, and ultimately, and here's the point, turned prophecy, God told me to tell you, into unreliable and fallible statements. In fact, it's run amok. Virtually everyone in certain circles are claiming, God told me, or I have a liver shiver, or a prompting, or a sense that God is telling me to tell you we don't need any of those fallible methods when we have the infallible Word of God. Did you know that Jesus Unmasked now has a Sunday School study guide? According to the experts, Jesus Unmasked Sunday School Guide. I'm pretending to actually read that, but I'm making it up. The Jesus Unmasked Sunday School Guide is the single best Sunday School curriculum ever created in the history of Sunday School curriculum. Wow, that's what they say. Those are the same people who say that we're being tracked by the government. If you're getting ready for Sunday School, Jesus Unmasked now has a study guide showing Jesus in every book in the Old Testament. Your class will love it. They will be convinced, persuaded, and assured that the Bible is the supernatural Word of God and Jesus is the promised Savior beginning in Genesis 1. Take it from them. Get the Jesus Unmasked Sunday School curriculum.